In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a live stream episode of In the Trenches podcast with Ryan Roxy. Um, above all, I thank you for taking some time out of your day. Uh, it's not like you were just sitting around the house doing nothing, right? <laughs> or maybe you were. And of course, oh, yeah. that's what's going to happen in the next uh, couple of weeks. That's why I decided to do this live stream podcast. So you can, if you are stuck at home, you can listen to it. You can hear that we're all in the same boat together and we're going to get through this together as well. So who did I choose to bring on to the show? And I think it was a good decision that I did. Uh, another guy that's in the trenches, been with me in the trenches now for a couple of years in the Alice Cooper band. Um, he's from New York via Switzerland, but you guys know him as being from every single hometown that we play every single night when we're on tour with Alice. Would you please welcome to In the Trenches, Tommy Hendrickson. Hello, Tommy. There it is. In my cell block in Switzerland, I'm hunkered down. <laughs> so, oh, man, what, what's going on? Anything happening? Any, uh, you heard anything about the news? Anything going on in the news <laughs> at well, all? <laughs> I get my news feed from Jack Pony, um, because his, his news feed's always good. But uh, around here, man, it's everything's locked down. It's been locked down for a while. You can't can't go anywhere right now. Everything's closed. You can only go shopping for groceries or to the doctor. Wow. So, yeah. well, you know what? That's the whole thing. We have people watching, as we can see in the chat, we have people watching from Australia to yeah. California. I'm in Sweden. You're in Switzerland. Nobody ever gets that right. Whenever we tell people, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, it's the same place. You guys must hang out all the time. Yeah. But the truth is we do hang out when it's, uh, when it's tour time, but yeah. nowadays uh, we'll be hanging out online. Maybe and we talk more. all the time too. We're always yeah. FaceTime and stuff like that. Um, Cause we're always just talking to each other. That's what we do. You know what I mean? How about communicate. that? Yeah, we're, communicate. We're, we're two guitar players, actually three guitar players that yes. communicate. Me you and Nita have pretty good communication on stage and off stage. I'd say yeah. I have such good communication that I'm wearing a certain shirt in honor of Tommy, because Tommy gave me this shirt. I love this shirt. I, I think he gave it to me on the last Australian tour. I've been wearing it every single day, right? You know what, man? I, I, I like giving stuff away, you know what I mean? Because people give us a lot of gifts a lot, a lot, a lot of the time, you know what I mean? We'll get like stuff and it's very surprising where you're like, whoa. Um, I don't know where Ryan just went. But, no, it's uh, all right. Good. I can still hear you. Um, it's actually kind of cool because you get these gifts from so many people. That's just really so sweet. And, and they make stuff for you. And it's, it's, it actually amazes me that they took the time to do that. So I always like giving stuff away too, whether it's a bracelet, not, not like regift or whatever, you know? Uh, but I don't know. I just like giving stuff away. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, I want to welcome everyone to the live stream of In the Trenches with the Ryan Roxy podcast. Uh, we have our guest, Tommy Hendrickson, today from the Alice Cooper Band. He's not only from the Alice Cooper Band, he's from the Hollywood Vampire. You are a true Hollywood vampire, wouldn't you say? Uh, you, yes. You are yeah. a full member of, a, of I, the band. I, I am, but some people don't recognize that, but um, <laughs> I it's do. fine. I definitely um, do. You're from New York. You're from via Switzerland. But then the boss introduces you from being every single town that we're on every single day. You know, whatever, whatever town we're playing, you're from that town. How did that come about? Honestly, I don't know. You got like, that's one of those Cooper things where it's like one night he was just like, I think he did it with someone else and they didn't like it. You know, like, <laughs> I don't want to be from that town. Am I from? That sounds like a Glenn thing. <laughs> That sounds like I'm, a, I'm not from that town. So then Cooper did it with me, and I was like, dude, you can call me from any town you want. Just call me. You I'm know? from Thousand Oaks. Make sure you get it right. <laughs> I'll be from, I don't care, Wake Waukegan, uh, was Saskatoon, whatever, whatever place yeah. we play in Canada. Yeah. Uh, what was Saskatchewan, some place in, whatever yeah. the hell it well, is. Well, Saskatoon is a place in Canada yeah. that we were supposed to play this next month. Um, I know. Obviously, we're all on lockdown here because of uh, COVID-19. Sounds like some sort of emo band, but uh, it's put us in sort of self-quarantine or everybody like from all over the place. I know that there, we have some listeners from uh, Italy watching, so our hearts are out with you, but you know what? We're all in this one together and we are going to get through it together. Yeah. Part of it is going to be, you know, through the power of our rock and roll guitars. So
I was asked to play that uh, riff. Yes, the there Kinks. That's one of our favorite Girl. bands. <laughs> yep. And but Roxy, it's just it's been really like, you know, we were just me and you. We were in Singapore, dude. That yeah. was like when we. I was like, what the hell's going on? This is we this knew was something early was up. It was early. Yep. Well, that's the thing. We were the two guys that when we yep. first started that Australian tour, that wore the masks, and everybody was. Making fun. Yeah. The, you know, and, and, and now I kind of look back at it like, well, you know, did it do any good? Did it not do any good? Are we all going to, you know, eventually end up catching it to some degree? But, you know, hey, that's current stuff. That's what we're going through right now. But the reason why I'm here today is because I won't, did a little digging on you. And that's the reason why for the podcast, because there's some people listening that might not know everything that I found out about you this last uh, couple of days of just going down the rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> I chose I chose a different rabbit hole of the internet to go down. This was the Tommy Hendrickson rabbit hole, which is probably a better decision for me. <laughs> we'll get you in any trouble. Oh yeah. Then we'll get, keep me out of trouble. But yeah. uh, obviously I said you're from New York. You grew up in New York and uh, you actually grew up not a guitarist, which maybe some of our listeners might be shocked. You yeah. started on no. bass guitar. Yeah, I was bass player originally for my whole life until I joined Alice Cooper. When Alice uh, said to me in the studio, uh, you play guitar? And I was like, yeah. Sure I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just learned it, you know what I mean? And uh, that was it. So I just figured I'd just be a guitar player, you know? So uh, even before I got back into the band, I think this was about 2011, um, I got back in 2012. I, you guys came to Sweden. Um, I interviewed, I think it was Damon or Chuck and stuff. And then you yeah. were in the hotel. I just remember you having the guitar in your hand and always practicing. And since that day, up until, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you're the guy that spends that extra time learning the instrument. And I'm, you know, I'm proud of you, man. You, you've become, nice. uh, you know, very, very few people can learn a brand new instrument. It's not so much brand new because you played bass and you're a good bass player all, all these years, but you definitely have taken on the guitar and really mastered it this last, you know, you're our, you're our foundation. You're our, you're our rock, man. Dude, that's really sweet. And I appreciate that. It's really nice. Um, honestly, it's like, I just love music and I love guitar and I love equipment. I could look at road cases and like, Oh, those road cases look cool. You know what I mean? Like amplifiers, even though we don't have any amps anymore. Um, but just guitars in general, I just love the way they look because they're sexy and they're, they're, they're cool looking and they got attitude. Well, know? I did notice on this last tour, we can talk about because it's still current events before I go way deep in your down your yeah. past. Uh, you just had to cut short a Rock Meets Classic tour which is kind of a bummer, right? You guys were in the middle of Germany halfway through the tour. It was Alice Cooper, Tommy Hendrickson, and a 50-piece orchestra with, you know, Robin Zander was there as well. But I saw you with one of the coolest looking SGs. Did you bring that out on the road? Is that a new one? No, I've had that for the longest time. Um, I took it off the road because I had it signed by everyone. When we did the Motley Crue tour, I had them sign all the vampires, the original uh, Alice Cooper group and, uh, Robin Zander actually signed to Enric Nielsen. And, nice. um, so I was like, let me take it off I'll, cause it's going to be for Finn. It'd be one of those things. So I had no guitars. Finn so I was like, is, is Tommy's son. And Finn is basically going to have the biggest guitar collection by the time he turns, <laughs> you know, right. Well, he has imagine, it already, man. But imagine being Rick Nielsen's kid. Yeah, that's that's a guitar collection. No, you know is, what I mean? Is. At least Finn, will, he'll have some guitars to choose from, you know, but I, that guitar, dude, that guitar always was cool. But the Rock Meets Classic thing, we just started getting into a groove because we got there, the arrangements were a little different. There was a song in a different key that we normally play it in. We had to relearn that. Coop's like, I'll do it. And, and they, re, they wrote all the charts out. So I looked at Coop. I was like, we got to redo it. So me and Coop, we learned it, relearned it. And then we had to relearn the, the arrangements. And then by the third gig, I was like, wow, this sounds really good. And all of a sudden, the fourth gig, I was like, this sounds amazing. <laughs> and then the Swiss Miss called me up and she's like, uh, don't get too comfortable out there. You're about to come home. And I was like, 
Come on. The Swiss Miss knows. And for those of you that don't know who the Swiss Miss is, that is Tommy's wife, who's from Switzerland. And uh, yeah, she knew about, she seems to know about things before we do. She seems to know definitely about your all your airplane flights. How did you even Dude. get home from that tour? Uh, I'll tell you how I got home from that tour. So we're in a bar that night, right? We're in Berlin. And uh, it's Mel, uh, Karen, uh, Anna, I'm trying to think who else, uh, Sue, a bunch of people were in there. Kinga Andy. was there. I know. Yeah. That, yeah. We had French. Um, yeah. I know. I, I know I, that a lot of people, because I kept getting updates on King, I called King Anna. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're all hanging out in the bar, and Kyla comes up to me. He's like, it's over. You're going home. I was like, dude, it's 11. What are you talking about? I was just hanging out, having a good time with everyone. And he's like, that's it. So Andy, this is how the universe works, dude. Andy, who is a pilot for Swiss Air, who actually was the guy who hooked the vampires up to go record at Hans' studios for the Heroes thing and all that. That's another story in itself. <laughs> um, so he happens to be there, and he's like, I'm going to Switzerland tomorrow morning. And I was like, okay. He's like, I'll get you on my flight. And I was like, no way. He went like this. All right. What time do you want to leave? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, we can leave at eight, nine, 10 or whatever. I was like, nine. He's like, great. We're done. Didn't have to call anyone up. Got on a plane the next day. Me and him went to the airport. It was a ghost town, dude. Yeah. That was some scary uh, Instagram footage that I think you put up on a story or you put up up as a post yeah. and it was just exactly. like empty. And I was like, okay, stuff shit's starting to get real. It is, and, and then look what's happened since then. Look what's transpired. But like I said, right. I, I don't want to concentrate and dwell too much on it, other mm -hmm. than just for everyone to know that's listening around the world, we're all in the same boat together. Yeah. We're going to get through this together, and um, of course, you're going to get through it by listening to Stefan Adika's coffee talk in the morning, and then every once in a while, I'll come on here and do a live stream in the trenches with Ryan Roxy right. podcast. Right. So, one way or another, but. I'm going to get through the next couple minutes talking a little okay. bit about you and the bands that you sort of cut your teeth on. Rough Cut. Okay. There was a Rough Cut, and that was a band that you had with your brothers, right? Uh, my brother Gene, but we like had the whole neighborhood. It was like one of those bands that when we put it together, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. But this guy, Bob Tease, like said to us, he goes, you guys are a bunch of dummies. He goes... <laughs> But if we do this sure right, that wasn't goes, Jack Pawnee that said that. Dude, you know what, man? <laughs> he's out of the Jack Pawnee school. Bob Pease is like he used to work at the Boogie Hotel and stuff like that, where Foghat used to make all their records and and stuff. And we painted the studio and became friends with Bob. And uh, Bob said, "You guys are a bunch of dummies. I'm gonna make you guys realize how to do this the right way." And he actually built it up. And we had all the people from the neighborhood do the whole thing. Do it. My brother was a drummer. And uh, we played the whole tri-state area. We're all on salary, dude. We were making money every week. It's like one of those things. I look back. We had one of the biggest light shows and stuff. And uh, did you guys play Lemores? We played Lemores all the time, dude. Lemores yeah. East uh, and Brooklyn. We played every way you could think of. We played, and we played six nights a week. And we sang. I sang like three sets a night. We were doing a Motley Crue show. Stefan, dude. He, he, he saw it, you know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> Lamore's Queens was my first gig in New York City. It was my first New York gig, Lamore's Queens with Circus of Power. It was Electric wow. Angels opening up for Circus of Power. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. How big was that place? Remember when you used to walk in, you used to be like, holy shit. I know, I know, shit. And, and that was a big place. Well, from there, obviously, one of the highlights as well, Doro Pesh. You played with, what, what did she call herself? The, the Queen? It was Wallop. It was what she's queen of heavy metal. Queen of heavy metal. Okay. What happened with that gig was um, so I'm playing in Rough Cut, and the band breaks up. My brother Gene does his thing. It's almost like you know, like uh, um, you know how L.A. Guns. You got Stephen Riley's L.A. Guns. <laughs> you got this is way ahead of this stuff. There yeah, was another did. Rough Cut in Los Angeles because right. that because I come from California. I remember that Rough Cut from yeah. L.A. Yeah. yeah, we had a lawsuit with those guys. Too. Different logos. Yeah, and, and we spelt it different. We oh, spelt did you have two T's? Hard. or did, where, where were your grommelets? Were your grommelets over the second O? Or the <laughs> no, we, Everybody had grommelets very, over that. Thank you, Motley Crue, for really- This is very New York, Roxy. <laughs> R-U-F-F-K-U-T. Yeah, okay. That's very New York. So um, we were playing around, stuff like that, but um, and uh, the band broke up. So you had Eugene's rough cut, and you had the cut. You know what I mean? Which was me and Rojo and this guy, John Michelli, who's the drummer of Meatloaf. 
and Gene had his own thing going on. So um, all I remember is after the cut broke up, I joined Ron Donnelly. This band, Ron Donnelly. The drummer, and, Ron Donnelly. The, yeah. I mean, legendary drummer, yeah. Ron Donnelly. I was like this kid in the neighborhood. I used to go and like wash Bobby's car and cut his lawn and stuff and watch him and his brother rehearse. So one day he said to me, he's like, I need a singer. And I was like, I know the guy for you. He does this great Van Halen tribute and his name's Ray Gillen. And uh, I put Bobby in touch with Ray. Next thing I know, Ray joins Ron Donnelly. James Lomenzo was the bass player then playing with those guys. Yeah. Uh, after like two years, I think James Lomenzo left. And then Bobby called me up and he's like, hey, two inch. That's what he used to call me. Two inch. Uh, like, what, would yeah. that be a, what would that be sort of? Referring to <laughs> well, it ain't my dick. You, <laughs> you might want to clarify that. <laughs> just make yes. sense. Um, but, hey, uh, man, we're on the metric system over here in Europe. It might be longer, you know, two inch, like, yeah. hey, two centimeter. Uh. <laughs> so, anyway, so what happened was Ray joined the band, and James quit or whatever. I don't know what happened. So then I joined the band. And we were managed by Lieber and Krebs at the time with Adam Baum and all that yeah, stuff. Lieber and Krebs, they, they, they had managed Aerosmith. They were top-notch managing. Yeah. Firm. And Paul O'Neill was the day-to-day -day guy who was the, the leader and the head of trans Siberian Orchestra later on. And, you know, Paul passed away, which really sucks because he was a really sweet guy. But anyway, so Ray was in the band. We're, in, we're doing demos with uh, the guy who produced Bon Jovi's first, Lance Quinn. Bon Jovi's, we're in Philadelphia. Bon Jovi's on first demos record, or Bon Jovi's first record, album? First album, Lance Quinn. Oh, wow. We're at the warehouse. I think it was, I think it was called the warehouse. With Runaway? Some guy and, with Runaway and uh, yes. she don't love him, she don't know. Great songs, man. So we're in that studio and we were making like, I don't know if you want to call it a record or a demo. And we're doing this and it sounded like White Snake. we were doing. It was really cool stuff. So we're doing that and uh, I don't know. The time frame of, but I remember it was like a month or so later, I get a phone call from someone who's at the New Jersey, they were at the Meadowlands or something like that, one of those places, and they're like, hey man, I'm going to see Sabbath, I heard your buddy Ray, your singer Ray is going to be in the band, and I was like, what? And then uh, I Ray heard, Gillen? yes, okay. so then I heard, I think it was from like uh, Dave Spitz, or one of my Jersey friends. Yeah. I forgot who it was, but um, I'm trying to say find. I, I'm trying to go down the, you know, trying to it's find weird, the dude. rabbit tail, you know, trying to go down the rabbit hole and trying to find the the pieces that all fit you together. But the the bottom line is, Doro. I'm gonna up, get the Doro. Okay, you're getting the okay. All right. So what happened was Ian, uh, uh, who was the singer down there? It wasn't the bass player, Glenn Hughes. Okay. So he couldn't cut the tour. So Ray, all of a sudden that night, was asked to join the band. So I get a call from Ray going. Hey, Tommy, man, uh, I was like, I know where you are. I was like, I'm here. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm going to the metal, metal, metal lens. And uh, he, he felt really bad. I said, listen, man, I was like, I didn't feel bad. I was like, Ray, it's a great gig. Go do it, man, and have fun doing it. So he went on to go play with Sabbath. Ron Danelli, that thing fell apart. And as it fell apart, I remember this guy, Joey Ballin, calling me up going, hey, Tommy, it's Joey Ballin. I'm working with this band, Warlock. She's the queen of heavy metal, and I hear you're the guy. From, All these guys the sound like good fellas. You know, Bobby Rondinelli and uh, you know, Bobby. <laughs> it is like that. So then Tommy Bowen calls me. He's like, yeah, I told uh, Joey Bowen about you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Tommy like, Bowen, eh. Tommy, you know. <laughs> Big Tommy. Yeah, you so they were, Tommy. <laughs> they, were, they were making their record at uh, the Power, whatever, whatever did. Uh, power Station? Yes. Okay. At Power Station. Nice. And uh, Joey called me up. They wanted me to come down. So I, I said to my mother, I was like, this band wants me to go down. My mother looked at me. She said, go. Don't be one of these idiots around here. Just go check it out. So I went. I checked it out. And then um, I remember meeting Doro, hearing the stuff. I was like, eh, it's not really my cup of tea, but let me go home and think about it. And, and I went home and I talked to my girlfriend, Angela, at the time. It was really funny. And she was like, don't do it. Don't be a loser. Get out of this town. So, and, uh, and my mother you, said, above you. all, you had the hair. You had the hair for well, it. Well, dude, it you was had like the out of control. Hair for, for Warlock. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'll pull up, you know, on the, on the remix and the dude. rebroadcast, I'll pull up the perfect shot, but you had the hair, buddy. 
Dude, <laughs> it's getting crazier right now. It's the longest I've had it in a long time. And yeah. uh, I'm just letting it go. So you got you know? so you got into the band. You, did you tour with them? Did you make some records? Obviously. On the first record that we did, uh, the All We All record, um, I didn't play on that record. Everyone thinks I played on it. Uh, this guy named Skylar Deal, this bass player, played all the stuff on it. And Cozy Powell played drums. And Michael played drums to some other guy. But when I joined the band, they just put my picture on it. And uh, they were like, you're in the band. Uh, we're going to Germany to take photos. I had no idea, dude, what any of this was happening because it happened so fast. Yeah. And next thing I know, I'm on a plane when you could smoke back then. On and, a plane, uh, of course. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you, you, you basically pulled a, Gil, a Gilby Clark because like with me, with Gilby Clark, I was on the, my name was on that first Pawn Shop Guitars album, but I did not play on that album. I played on right. some of the B sides, right? That eventually got put out. But, but right. kudos for you for just embracing it. And now I'm sort of, I'm being a little forthcoming now that I wasn't on that Pawn Shop Guitars album, but my name was on the credits right under Slash. So it gave me good perception. <laughs> we said that no. that album gave me a good perception. Exactly. Which perception is really cool. Is reality. <laughs> and you know what? You're in the company of Slash. So, I mean, how better can, it can't get any better than that, you know? Absolutely. But I didn't care because I didn't know anything, you know? <laughs> so then after we did that tour, the manager, this guy named Alex Grobe, a real, anyway, I can't wait to find that guy. Um, you know, he fired the whole band. And he's like, uh, we're firing the band and we're calling it Doro. And I was like, why would you do that? We just did this whole thing. And uh, he's like, because she's the queen of heavy metal. And I was like, <laughs> all right. So, hey, man, she's royalty. I mean, in, in some world, some way, she's royalty. So I'm sitting there, right? And I'm like, well, what do you want to do? He's like, can you put a band together? I was like, I could put a band together right now. I went home. I called up Rhonda Nelly. I go, hey. Rondo, I got a gig for you, pal. You know, and Rondo's like, ah, I don't know. So then I called this guy, John Levin, who was in this band, who I saw. He plays in Dockin now. We Amazing know John. Yeah, John's great. Yeah. He's, he's he's one of the best all-around guitarists slash lawyers I've ever seen or yeah. gotten legal advice from. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's honest. That's the honest truth. So, so what band did this become? This was uh, Doro. This was the Doro band. So we went and made a record. Um, me and Joey and Doro and John wrote all the songs. We went in there, we did the record and, uh, all the stuff went gold. All these records went gold. I still haven't seen any money from it, which is really funny because <laughs> it's like I me with Tal Bachman. We were just talking about that a little bit earlier. It's terrible. <laughs> it's funny how that money know just goes, I know, I know, but you know what, what's, what's, well, it's, it's, it's painful. But not kind of now when you can take a step back and we're still playing music at this age, we're still doing what we wanted to do when we were kids, we can laugh about it a little bit. Right. The one right. story right. I kind of always do laugh about that you, and I want you to tell is because, you know, you're getting out of Doro. You, you, you know, something's out. You got this you got this amazing head of hair. You got this look. You got this vibe. And then Joan Jett asked you to play in her band or, or yes. something happened yes. with that. But, but what, yeah. what transpired? Please tell. Uh, Paul and Neil, uh, you know, from Lieber and Krebs said to me, I got a gig for you to go to. And he's like, and he said to me, he goes, don't fuck it up. And I was like, <laughs> Who, me? so of course, me being me, I go to Joan Jett's rehearsal. And this is when she was doing that movie with uh, Michael J. Fox. I forgot the name of that movie, Bright Lights or something like that, whatever it was. And I went down there and I played and uh, Kenny Laguna said, come back to the house. I went back to the house and he's like, uh, we're really interested in having you play bass with Joan. And I was like, oh, great. He's like, under one condition, you got to cut off all your hair. <laughs> and me being Here an idiot go. from New York, it's like, you don't have any, like I had nobody to tell me this is the way you do it, son. This yeah. is the Just way Just cut the goes. hair. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with it later. Yeah. No. So what I happened? Said, you no, said no, that, that, was your, that was your line in the sand. Yep. I said, no, I'm not cutting my hair. So I go home. Paul O'Neill calls me up. He goes, are you an idiot? <laughs> I go, why? He goes, did you just tell me you just turned down Joan Depp because you didn't want to cut your hair? I said, yeah. He goes, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but you survived. And you survived. You, you, you eventually moved to L.A. And then that's where our story kind of crosses because I was playing in a band called Dad's Pornomag. Yep. 
you're playing in a band at that point, a power trio called P.O.L., yep. Parade of Losers, who actually happens to contain current Alice Cooper drummer and basically household name, Glenn Sobel. So tell us about P.O.L. Tell us a uh, little bit P. about P.O.L. P.O.L was one of those things when uh, the whole Doro thing fizzled. I was like, I was in New York and I was like, you know what, man, I'm just going to drive to LA. I had 1500 bucks in a Camaro. Swear to God. I drove out to LA and uh, I was doing extra work with this guy, Frank Leva at the time. He, you know, he's a really good friend of mine, great drummer and stuff. And he was getting me all this extra stuff where you go down, do the stuff. And um, so we're doing that, banging out. And then, what happened was before the P.O. Well thing, I was in C.C. DeVille's Needle Park with Kelly Hansen from Farna and James Kotak from the Scorpions. Dude, you're going to need like some sort of like detective whiteboard to figure out all this stuff that's going on. I, I hope those of you that are listening are taking notes because there's so much family history and family Bruce, tree rock and roll history going before on. Before that, I was in War and Peace with Jeff Pilsen. And Russ Parrish from Steel Panther, Satchel and Ricky Parent, God rest his soul. Um, like Pilsen actually saved my life. I have to tell you, if anyone saved my life, it was definitely, definitely Jeff Pilsen. Um, I had no way to live. I was living in my car and he, I so, went down. So the POL the, gigs weren't paying great. The POL gig <laughs> didn't come until after War and Peace. So, uh -huh. so I was in war. So I, I joined War and Peace and we're in Jeff's band. I move into Jeff's house. He teaches me so much stuff, Pilsen, about like everything, about life and just, I don't know. He, he was really like a great teacher for me. Like he came into my life at the right time, Pilsen. And uh, he taught me about food, like just everything. Like I was like, why does this guy know so much? And he's so talented. And I learned so much from him, you know. And then when Russ came to the door, he was like this little kid. And we were like, yeah, he's in the band. And then we had the band and we had Camel Management with Lisa Hendricks, managers, Sherry Fall, all these people were around us and we couldn't get a record deal because Nevada That's came. A story. Isn't that always a story? Look, let me ask you this. Were you ever in a band yeah. with Mike Pont? Because he's actually, uh, he, he's in the chat right now and I wanted Mike to say, Pont, I wanted to do a shout hotshot. out to Mike Pont. You know? Mike Pont was the king of Long Island, dude. Hot shot, him, Bruno Ravel, Steve, Steve West, Sykes, all yeah. those guys, man. Yeah. yeah. I know, I know. I just wanted to recognize that, you know, folks, Mike Pond's Pond a legend, dude. Is in He's the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but after that War and Peace thing fizzled out, that's when all of a sudden I moved back to uh, New York and I was there. A tree almost fell on me. I was like, why me, Jesus? What did I do? I moved back to LA. And then all of a sudden, uh, I was at the Rainbow one night and someone said, CeCe DeVille's looking for a bass player. And I went up to his house to jam. Back then, CeCe's house was like for every misfit you could imagine. It was just filled with drugs. It was no, in a circus. Yeah. No furniture. And uh, I is, went up there and jammed. This is the eighties. This is 1991. 19. Well, well, late eighties, early nineties, same difference. Yeah. It, it, it was debauchery. It, really it was. was. And he had no furniture and it was just drugs. And you'd be up there for like days. And you know, I mean, I never party. And that's what he said to me. He's like, I don't know about you. <laughs> You don't party. And I was like, dude, I did all that. I'm not going to start doing that now. He would it's look at me and say, I know about you. You party too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I was always on time. That's, that's one of my... Long... Go ahead. Make a long story short, which I always thought was funny. So we're doing this Needle Park thing. He gets this huge record deal on Hollywood Records for like, I don't know, it was like $2 million. And he's like, I'm going to make all you guys rich. And I remember just sitting there and Kelly Hansen and James and we were just like, all right, let's see if this thing lasts for like six months because unless he might die, because that's how bad it Tommy, was. Tommy, you're in a band called Needle Park. What did you think was going to happen? <laughs> Needle Park. Well, at least Kelly didn't party. So me and Kelly would have I know you and Kelly party. are actually the monks. I mean, yeah. I can imagine Kelly going, well, no, the, the, my toy. tea and lemon is a little strong for me tonight. <laughs> yeah, and then Cece fired him. And then- Oh, wait, I, wait, I, no, 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 Cece didn't. Didn't you? <laughs> well, the thing was, Cece's like, he's out of the band. <laughs> and, and Cece wouldn't tell me he was fired. And I said to Kelly, I was like, he's not going to tell you, dude. So I called up Kelly. I was like, 
Because yeah. Kelly would always say to me, you're the least important guy in the band. I remember that. Was that because was, you you were the bass player? Yeah, because the bass player. I'm used is to Is Stefan listening still? I, is, I don't know. Is, is, is Stefan listening? <laughs> so, but CeCe couldn't fire him. So I called up Kelly. I was like, dude, he's not going to tell you. He's a pussy. You're out. And he's like, that's it. So next thing you know, I was fired. Like, But anyway, so we did a video with Spike from the London Choir Boys. And we did this remake of Hey Good Looking for the Son-in-Law soundtrack. If you could find that, that's a good one. With, oh, dude, with there's going to be someone chart. on the chat right now that finds it and, and sticks it up, and it's going to actually go, uh, well, things don't but go I platinum got fired, anymore. And yeah. Roxy, I got fired like about, I don't know how many months after that. Well, the thing uh, is, though, you're resilient, dude. You, you're, you're like Jason. You're like Jason part eight. You always like stand up and you, you dust yourself off and you, you, you know, and say, okay, fine, I'll do it. Because I know that you had a solo album as well. You had, you know, one of your, one of your biggest uh, influences and, and guys is Peter Gabriel. And yeah. you made an album that had uh, sort of flavors of that. If I, if I could be so bold to say that. And, I had all that stuff. You know, I was trying to do it. Yeah. So that was in 1999, right? So so yeah. you do you do the Tommy Hendrickson solo album, and then you take some time, you know, obviously songwriting, playing, uh, just in the trenches, like we say, learning how to play guitar yeah. in a rock and roll band with Steve Hunter, who's probably one of the best guitar teachers that you could have to be yep. in the Alice Cooper band in the, in the uh, 2000, when, when did you join Alice? 2009, uh, I started 10? working with Alice in 2009, like you know what I mean? But I didn't join the band until 2010 and 11 was the first uh, tour that I did. Right. Yeah. So, so then you, then you go on and there's this, this is where I find the research kind of, all right, this is where shit gets mysterious. I see on one of your album credits, you're an aerobic collection <laughs> album. Did you really? even know? Did you even know that you were an aerobic collection album? No. And a tribute to Limp Biscuit. That um, I do not. Okay. Yeah, I did that song called The One. All yes. right. There you go. So and, those, uh, those are some Harris albums. Loved it. Yeah. All right. But then you went on to do your own solo album. So you you get to the point where you're making solo albums, you're playing Tommy, Tommy, Tommy and Starstruck. And I'm going to probably play a little bit of Starstruck when I do the rebroadcast. But now, because I just don't want to get banned in every country, uh, I want to just talk about it. Yeah. How we're making those solo albums for you? Um, It was funny because after being in Alice Cooper, I was like, ah, I'm going to make like a rock record, but I'm going to put keyboards in it. And make it weird because I love keyboards. I love craft work. I love the cars. I love all of that stuff. And I love rock music. I love punk music. I love world music. So I was like, let me try and make something that sounds like that. And uh, so that was the first record, the Tommy, Tommy, Tommy record. And then the second record, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make a straight up rock record this time. You know what I mean? Just write some songs. And uh, I did it all here, you know, like in my apartment, you know what I mean? On a laptop. Yeah. Well, and, you've, uh, well, you've done a lot of, for me, I couldn't be more proud of the mixes that you've done for my solo album. You've done yeah. three of the mixes on the on the solo and, and production on my solo album. Plus, you did the Roxy 77 EP as well. Yeah. And you would always tell me, you know, you, you know how to mix. You know where to play stuff. And I love it because you always know what the right production that I like. You know, right. And then I think a lot of people like it's it's a nice lush, but it's still in your face. And you continue to do that work past Alice Cooper, past your own solo stuff, all the way up to the Hollywood Vampires, which you produce the album Rise. I mean, I know it's a band production and I know it's all politically correct to say band production, but I know Tommy Hendrickson Productions and that sounds all Tommy to me. Because it's it's vibey, it's in your face, and it and it has it's experimental with cool ideas, and that's what I think you always bring to the table. You always bring an open mind to each and every project. So tell us a little bit about the Hollywood Vampires and your production uh, approach to that album. Honestly, that production approach was like that's that's Johnny Depp going, "Hey, brother, I don't want to make this slick." Let's just keep it raw. And I was like, you want raw? Let's do it raw. So what we did was we recorded that whole thing pretty much live. Like it was 
some nights it was like, it was tough, man, because I'd be up like seriously, like 18 hours a day because I get up at seven in the morning. I'd work till seven, nine o'clock the next morning. Cause Joe would come in at like three o'clock in the afternoon. I'd work with him till like five in the morning. Then Johnny would show up at like five and I'd go with Johnny from like five to nine o'clock or 10 sometimes. And, uh, and JD was a big part of that. I, I, I can't take all the credit for that because he was the one telling me, I would always be like, do you dig this? And he's like, keep on going, brother. I love it. Mm-hmm. So when you hear that record, it's out of tune. It's out of time because we didn't grit anything. There's no samples on it. There's hardly any vocal tuning on it at all. Like with Alice's vocal, I kept it raw because that's the way Johnny wanted to do it. And Alice, you know, we sang all that stuff in hotel rooms. Right. And just like and, this, just like my solo album, we've done a lot of the tracks yeah. when we did it in solo albums and or in in uh, well, except our apartment, our, our hotel rooms weren't as nice as the hotel rooms that you stayed in with the Hollywood vampires. I think maybe Hollywood, I think Ritz Carlton has a better ambience of sound than, yes, the, than the Marriott, but, but yeah. it, it, at the end of the day, it still sounded great. And I'm happy that you kept that album as raw as you did. Cause that's what I told you the first time I heard it. I said, this yeah. is what a rock band sounds like. You know, it's basically like I, you stepped inside the rehearsal studio, you know, and with Joe, when Joe's playing, like, I was like, I'm not going to stop him every bar to tell him to tune up. I was like, let him go. And that's what I did. I just let him go. Let him do his thing. I didn't tell Joe what to play or anything. I was just like, I got it. He'd be like, what do you mean? I was like, I got it. He'd be like, no. And I was like, yes, I got it. You know, and then with JD. We, have, we really have to work on our impressions because each guy that we do imitate sounds like the same guy. <laughs> well, Johnny's more like, Johnny's more like, hey, brother. You know, he's calm. You got JD down. You got Johnny down. His voice is always calm. He's always calm. I've been around him where you'd be like, I can't believe this guy ain't freaking out. You know, he, he'd always be like, listen, brother, it's all good. You know, Joe, on the other hand, Joe would be like, I got this. <laughs> like, you know, it would be really funny because he's just dealing with everyone. Then when I played it for Coop, I remember Coop going, why does this sound weird? And I was like, because it's out of tune. It's, that's just the way, like Johnny's on the left side, Joe's on the right. And then Glenn would come in at like four in the morning. I'd be like, Sobel, come on in. No one's here. Let's cut the drums. Or Johnny would be there and be like, bring in your boy, Glenn. And I said to Glenn, I was like, just show up, dude. I'll call you like three, four, five in the morning. You got to show up with Glenn Wood. And that's what happened. That sounds a little bit like the making of the Slash's Snake Bit record, because that's usually when rehearsals would kind of start at one point. But I'm not sure if those listeners out there, if you're listening to the podcast right now, if you're actually listening and watching us on YouTube, um, our director slash producer Vic Chalfont has gone crazy with the photos. He, I mean, when I told him you were going to be on the show, I, I told him, hey, grab a couple photos, grab maybe a video of this, that. Apparently... He went to town. He's, he, I think he's got your whole collection of every nice. photo you've ever been in with Hollywood vampires. <laughs> but I love it, well, man. It's good, it's been a good one, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it adds for me visually. I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm loving it. So thank you very much, Vic. And uh, of course, thank you very much, Tommy, for hanging out with us. And thanks, thanks to you to our live audience that's listening right now, wherever um, house or apartment or you know, bunker you are holed up in right now. Obviously a weird time of the world, but we're getting through it together and we're getting through it with guitars. I told him, Tommy, I told you to bring your guitar. So I did. I, I mean, I'm going to, oh, man, can we even do this? I, I, I'm going to say, cause it's Tommy's always like playing a... guitar licks. I want you to play your favorite running. guitar right. lick. Yeah. <laughs> Learning Angus Young. That's what okay. I'm that right sounded like a little yeah. bit like Billy Gibbons yeah. as well, but I mean, I'll take it into a little, to another uh, round. I'll, I'll do a little bit of uh, Beatles. What song is that? I want you so bad. Oh, yeah. 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 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that, that doesn't sound good with like low Wi Fi. <laughs> That's anyway, funny that we both chose the uh, we both chose the Les Pauls today. You know, yours is the three pickup Ace Freely special with the smoke yeah. bomb in the middle, and yeah. um, you, well, that's a Les Paul custom, right? Yeah, I really love this guitar, man. Oh. It's like I will never sell this one. You know, oh. it plays so good, sounds so good. You know, I might sell anyway. this one. I mean, come on, look at the times we're in. I might sell it. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're unemployed right now, dude. Hey man, that brings me to the next point because we're going to wrap up the podcast and then maybe take some questions yeah, from, uh, from the chat and from the conversation group. But obviously I want to thank everyone that's been listening to this podcast. I want to thank Tommy Hendrickson for coming on, telling us a bunch of stories. I'm going to have to go down Wikipedia and pretty much research every name that he said, except Mike Pont, because that's a household name. And then <laughs> Everyone for listening, uh, if you want to support the show, just always go on to ryanroxy.com or if you want to support Tommy Hendrickson, what is the best way to get in touch with you and support you? I got nothing. It's an Instagram, <laughs> dude. It really is. I don't got a website. It's terrible. At this I'm trying, to get, I'm getting, trying to get Vic to do something. Hopefully I'll have something oh, coming dude, soon. Judging from the amount of photos that Vic collected over the course of this interview, I think he's going to do you just right, man, because he's at this vicious one. That's Tommy's. Um, yeah. Instagram. Instagram. But you got tons of followers already, man. But you know what? We're making more. We're making more. Well, the good thing is we have a lot of the same people, you know what I mean? Like we have this little circle, which is really cool because everyone travels to the gigs, you know what I mean? And it's and it's like we become friends with all of these people, which I kind of like. It's not, first it starts out like the fan thing, whatever, but then it just gets a little, you know, it gets deeper than that, you know? Absolutely, it does. It is a family. And, uh, you know, I'm going to wrap this podcast up before we go into our little extra bonus credit of uh, questions and stuff. But again, if you want to support, follow at Tommy on Instagram or follow at this vicious one on Instagram, yeah. Tommy Hendrickson. For me, it's at Ryan Roxy. And at the end of the day, man, enjoy the ride. Thanks for listening to In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy podcast. And we'll see you next time. But guess what? Now begins a whole new era because Tommy, now we can, I can relax a little bit because that was sort of the podcast and then I'll edit it up and make it sound good stuff. But we have questions for you. Uh, Ryan, what's your favorite of Tommy's songs and what's your favorite of Ryan's songs? Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't mean a damn but a damn reservation. Okay, so we know we know Tommy's favorite is Me Generation from my yes. from my album, which he produced. Exactly. But uh it's a good tune. Yeah. A little starstruck. And yeah. you know what? It's not that it's my favorite. It's just the one that I've played the most with you and right. vice versa, because that's what we do in the goon squad. For those of you that are listening and, you know, if you're listening right now and you're on the chat, you've obviously <laughs> heard this about the goon Bur squad. This is for Burkholder. See, when I did that riff, it always reminded me of like this Foghat song. Uh, I forgot the name of the song. Uh, really cool song. And I was like, oh, that sounds like Foghat. It That's does sound a little bit like a Foghat song. And I'm trying and to think it's, of a Foghat it's, 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 song. It's one of those Foghat songs where you go, I don't know what it is. But driving Wheel. That's it. You're my driving wheel. That's okay. it. Yes. Well, Foghat live. Wow. Dude, I loved Foghat. Lonesome Dave was amazing. Of all the bands, I mean, well, we had the pleasure just recently playing with... Uh, a band that you play in the dress room all the time. We got to play with a Rose tattoo in Australia and we actually got to play rock and roll outlaw. That was pretty cool, man. That was, that was like one of those like bucket list things when angry, you know what I mean? Showed up at the gig. Yeah. Thanks to you and your friends over there. And, uh, they sorted it out, man. 
And I know yeah, we no, have listeners right now from Australia. Thank you for, for sorting out uh, Rose Tattoo. Because if you don't know who Rose Tattoo is, you definitely know Nice Boys Don't Play Rock and Roll. That was great, you know? All that stuff, man. It's It was cool, though. That's all I got to say. It was one of those things I was like, oh, my God. This is awesome. I'm going to look at you some know? of these questions for you, Tommy. How uh, How are we all keeping fit when stuck indoors? I'm still doing the same damn Jill- Jillian Michaels video that I've done since like you know since for the last 10 years it's the same 25 minute cardio video that i think i got in a dvd at a target somewhere how do you keep in shape while we're stuck indoors dude i gotta get into that man i'm eating too much (laughs) bread right now when i'm home it's just like it's just everything's you know bread and i gotta cut that cut that out anyway that's how i'm staying in shape i'm gonna start i'm gonna start eating less (laughs) <laughs> are you um tommy what is your favorite musical interlude from the rise album that's a good question uh, that is a good question i would definitely say it has to be uh the one before uh the johnny thunder song How, what was that one called again it's the piano bit that jamie maholbrek did uh hang on a sec let me let me because i it's I don't I just can't remember. I'll bet you someone uh, on the comments has it right now. Which one was that? Wow, look at this. You got some people hinting at the new stuff, but I didn't know if you wanted to unleash the new stuff just yet. So I'll, I'll let you. Uh, the wrong bandage. Okay. That's what it was called. What's it called? The wrong bandage. The wrong bandage. Nice. All of these, all those lyrics are from Johnny's. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's something that that's I think people other. should actually. Uh, know about is that these lyrics that came out from this album yeah i remember you telling me this story it was yep. pretty impressive it would, came from johnny's sort of notebook of poetry ideas yeah. songs you know yeah he writes down he's got like books Thoughts. and uh he does art in there and he puts all of his journal and he writes all of his personal stuff and all of these weird things and he just said to me when we started making records like can you make songs out of this stuff and i looked at him i was like Absolutely. So I just go through the journals and I just write notes. I'd be like, Oh, how the glass fell. That's cool. Uh, a pitiful beauty. Great. And then I was like, welcome to bushwhackers. Who's laughing now? Like good people, hard to find. You know, I'd, I'd write all the stuff down. Then when I hear a song or a riff that we came up with, I'd be like, this sounds like, you know, Mr. Spider. And he'd be like, Mr. Spider. Yeah. I like, that like one. yeah. And he'd be like, you know what that's about? I'd be like, I have no idea, but it's a good title. He goes, yeah, I'll tell you about that song. And then we'd go back to the book and he'd uh, tell me the story. I, th- I think the best story of all those ones, whether it's Mr. Spider or whatever, is the Boogeyman Surprise. Yeah, the Boogeyman because, was what, what, what is the Boogeyman Surprise? Because I know that people have probably asked about it or maybe they have. Is, 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 should the truth come out? Or uh, should the it Boogeyman, be, yeah. I, the Boogeyman Surprise, one of those songs, I was serious when we did it. I was like, this has got to be the boogeyman surprise. Cause I was like, you ain't ready for the boogeyman surprise. And John's like, he's like, you know what the boogeyman surprise? I'm like, have no idea, brother. He's like, oh, brother, I got to tell you what the boogeyman surprise is. <laughs> I don't want to say anything right now. But you anyway. don't want to say it? Dude, the boogeyman surprise is a good story, man. Let, let JD say that one, dude. All right, all right. We'll save it's it for a great that. Story. Wow, that's a cliffhanger, man, that you left. Yeah. All right. So, well, then we'll, then we'll go to a softball. We'll go to a softball question. Tommy, okay. how many tattoos do you have? Well, that should I got be an a easy one. Oh, just it, a lot? Dude, seriously? I, one, two, three, four, five. I, dude, it's like, I don't know. It's got to be like 70 of them. They're all small tattoos. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've had them going for years and stuff. But How come know. no one asked me that question? How come that question wasn't posed to me? What? 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 Because I got zero. Yeah. Zero. I know. You know what? Me and Alice Cooper are the only two rock and rollers, I think, that don't have tattoos. If you can name another rock and roller that doesn't have a tattoo, put it in the Glenn comments. Sobel. Glenn Sobel. No, Glenn has one, doesn't he? No, he does. He's got an eye piercing. That's it. That's just because he wants to be married, uh, buried in a mausoleum. That's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> and he will. And he will. <laughs> Well, I haven't talked to the G-Man. Because we're burying him out here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. There he is, right there on the right. Look I at love him. the G-Man, dude. You He's the only love guy the G-Man. shows up. He knows all the songs like better than everyone. Yes, you know? he does. He charts them out. 
charts them out. So wait a second. I'm going to, if anyone wants to come on right now and uh, hang out for a second there or two with the living legend that is Tommy Hendrickson, I'm going to put on this link right now. And if you got the balls, the kahunas to come on the show, um, obviously Adika, if you're around, I want you to come on, but I'm not sure if you're still watching it or listen to it. But Vic, if you see someone come on, why don't you have them come on and uh, bring them on and we'll talk about it. By the way, thank you very much, Vic, for uh, yeah. supervising the show. You've done a great job so far. It's um, like I said, our, I'm, I was thinking this even went longer than I thought it was going to be, but everything's been fun. It's been a good time, yeah. and I really appreciate you taking the time, Tommy. Who's who's yeah. up on the stream right now? Kitty. Kitty, there you are. Hey. What's happening? Hello. Hey, Not thanks for awesome. supporting, Kitty. Thank you very much for supporting it, and, I, and thank yeah. you for wearing headphones. Hey. Yeah. What are you <laughs> yeah, doing? Are you working out? Are you working out right now? I think she's from I mean, Australia. It's like, yeah. it's like five in the morning or something, Nelly. You told so me you were going to set your alarm so that you yeah. could see it. So I thought like maybe you got the headphones on, you're on the treadmill, you're like in the house. Because I we wish. Have that... <laughs> what are you doing? You getting ready for your day? Three in the morning, man. Uh, wow. Is it... Not quiet. I haven't even gone to bed yet. But it's... I live the rock and roll lifestyle. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tomorrow. Yeah. Do you have a question for Tommy at all? Um... Just wanting to know what's what's next for you. Like, what are you going to do for the next however long while this quarantine thing's going on? What uh, have you got planned? I've just been working on some music, so uh, it's going to be coming out. Hopefully, I'm hoping uh, this year, next year. I don't know. We'll find out. I got like this thing I've been working on with uh, a good friend of mine, so uh, we'll yeah. see what happens. I like that. That's a, that. That's a good one. That's almost as much of a cliffhanger as what the boogeyman surprise is. So I, can't, I really can't talk. No, about it's right good now. because I I could. It, it's going to be good, man. Trust me. I know a little bit more, but my lips are sealed. So that was a good question, Kitty. Again, thank you for always supporting. Thanks for being on. Um, should we bring I'm Nick on? on? The last time too, dude. She was on the Dika show. Wait, wait. Hey, it's Sparky. Well, it's Sparky's <laughs> on, but but wait a second. It's not Sparky. I see Sparky's head, and then I see her ear, and then I see part of her. I can't figure this out. Well, it's it's there a camera. Go. Oh, there we go. There you yep. go. There we go. Hey, what's happening, Sparky? What are you doing? How are you doing? Hello. Well, Sparky had well someone that worked in Sparky's office had coronavirus. She'll tell you all about it. Yes, they did. I, I spent a week at home. All right. Yeah. And then I, I was back in this week. Well, I'll be spending the next month at home, apparently. Yeah. Just yeah, right now I still have to be in the office. I work oh, in travel, so it's fun. Yeah. Well, damn. It's, it's tough right now, yeah. man. Everything's closed. Yeah. No planes, yeah. no nothing. It's, but the, the co-worker who had it, she's back in the office. She's absolutely fine now. So this thing can be beaten. Yep. It's just going to take a little time. Hang in there. Hang in there, Sparky. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. just getting a notice right now that someone is trying to enter, but the studio is full. That means that when we put up the link, you people answered and all wanted to come in. So, Sparky, you're on with us right now, but we're going to kick mm -hmm. you out and bring on maybe Nick Sessler. That's fine. Is that okay? Tell but, Jimbo I said hello. Yeah, tell Jimbo. I will. Hello. All right. We'll see. <laughs> Bye, we'll guys. see you again. Hold it down in the UK, oh, right? Sparky. Hey, there's Hi. Nick. What's Definitely. up, dude? Hey, what's happening? How are you guys doing, man? You can hold it down and you can go. Uh oh, you got it. You got to put your headphones in there in order to do that. Unfortunately, Nick, but uh, you got to. You need headphones and you need all that kind of stuff. Are you okay? You're doing all right. Unfortunately, Nick, but uh, you got to. <laughs> Cool. I got you. We'll bring you back on in a little bit. Who's who? Who wants to wait? Is Mel here? Who's there? Oh man! Hey, Joanna, what's happening? <laughs> That's it. How you, How doing, you doing? You got you got your family here now. What are you thinking, Joanna? Honestly, this has been a rough thing for me. Like, I'm relocating back to home. Okay. I'm on relocating. <laughs> Is that good so, or bad? Uh. I didn't expect my college to career to end this way. You know what? We didn't expect our career to end this way yeah. either. We did not expect. Yeah, I was I was already packed. I, I didn't unpack from Australia. I still had my suitcase packed of stuff. I'm like, well, I'm going out in three weeks anyway. Let's go. Yeah. So and, and so many people right now, man, are just we're all in the same boat. You know what I mean? It's just like 
it's so tough right now. Like with everyone, the crew, everyone working, you know what I mean? It's like, everyone is like lost money. Jo- this is, it's terrible right now. Well, you know what though? Come out. This is going to be our home for the next couple months, I guess. You know what? I'll be doing some live podcasts and live stream podcasts and I'll edit them up. I'll do a rebroadcast of course, but this is all bonus time for us. But you know what? Thanks for hanging out and uh, dropping by. Yeah. Um, who? Do, hey, there's Mel right there. The baker. Mel the baker. On? Jeez. How you feeling? And Roxy. Hi, hello. Are you following me on Instagram. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's up? Where, where, where are you from now? Where are you calling in from? Germany, Hamburg. German, German Hamburg. That's right. Yep. You just saw Tommy, didn't you? She was at the bar when mm. I got Kyla coming and going. It's over. <laughs> you were there for the call. Ooh. She was there. Yeah. I was there. Shit. They had the whole thing planned out. Her and Sue. Man. And a bunch of other people. Yeah. It's just, Sue's yeah. Now. Yeah. Well, well, hang tight in there. Hang tight in Germany. And you know what? Just so, just so you know, Stockholm ain't no different. <laughs> Switzerland ain't so different. And I guess you somewhere, anywhere in the States ain't so different. In fact, maybe we should go to the States. Maybe we should get... Uh, Michael or Melanie, someone on from the States that we know. But thanks for there. Yo, Michael, what's up? What's up, brothers? Hey, look what's up? Michael's been working hard on his technical stuff. He's got he's he's invested in headphones. He's got a new microphone. <laughs> <laughs> he's done well. Looks good. Looks very good. You can hear me better now, right? Oh yeah. Hey, great. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. We got cut off the other day, man. I had a question for both of you guys. Uh what is your favorite guitar, each of you? out of your arsenal wow good question i mean tommy if you had one guitar that you could keep to be honest with you it's probably one of tommy's (laughs) my my favorite guitars but because all of his guitars play amazing and i'm not just joking it but his guitars are set up they play amazing he's got these things that he puts on them that they stay in tune they're amazing but if i had my one choice i would take my 1972 gold top I call it my first Beautiful. girlfriend. It's all checked and cracked, and it's a, it's a yeah. seventy two deluxe, but it has deluxe. Humbuck, I have a seventy two deluxe in it. But the the gold has gotten sort of uh, greenish. It's oxidized yeah. a bit, and it it, lo- it looks killer. So I just That's haven't brought it out is. lately. But Tommy, what's your favorite? Uh, my Silva SG, that one that I have I played for years, but I, I took it off the road the, like the last tour. But I want to bring it back again, the silver one. Wow. Yeah, it's like a 1998, I think, or seven. I, I do like that guitar, the, the the silver one. I know, but you have so many nice guitars, dude. And Pl- and Palermo gives you some good ones too, as well. Palermo, don't, don't, you, don't you have a, a, a signature oh, wow. one? There she is. Hello. What's up, Melanie? How you doing? I'm How you doing? good. How are y'all? Hey. Well, I just have one question. Lot. I just have one question. What do you guys? Y'all got enough toilet paper? <laughs> you saw me stockpiling the other day. The other day, Bianca and I stockpiled some toilet paper. I, we couldn't help ourselves because we because we looked. We went to the store. We saw empty uh-huh. shelves, and then and then we saw like two uh, packages left. So we go. You know what? We need. You never know. So we got them, never. but it's 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 the sandpaper type. So if anything, it's going to curb us from actually going to the bathroom because it's that kind that's rough. Like yeah. like 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 Tommy was in rough cut. This is uh-huh. this is definitely. I think the brand name is Rough Cut. Dude, <laughs> well, it's yeah. good to see y'all. Same here. How you doing? Thank you. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm at work, but other than that, I'm good. We're not wow. closing. Wow. Well, hang in there. I know you're coming yeah. from Alabama. I I and I know that Arkansas, some of you guys. Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I thought you were from. Well, I always see you at Alabama shows, so I just figured you're from Alabama. But, no, from Arkansas. Rock and roll is allergic to Arkansas. Y'all know y'all have yeah. not been here in almost four years. Y'all need to come on. We do. Wow. Me and B, we're waiting on y'all. All right. All right. Well, Vic's <laughs> been, you know, just so y'all know, Vic's been, sh- you know, get getting you guys in, getting you guys out. So we don't have a chance to say goodbye. If we don't, it's not, we're, I'm not putting, I'm not cutting you out. Tommy's not cutting you out. Yeah. You can blame Vic. All right. But, but Vic's doing a great job, by the way. But what's hey. happening, man? Nice to see you. What's uh, happening? What's going down? Hello. How you doing? Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you fine. What's up? Yeah. Cool. Ah, in quarantine. All right. Welcome to the quarantine, baby. Welcome exactly. to the quarantine. Yeah. 15 days. So I got <laughs> one question. What is it? 
What album do you have that you can play over and over? Tommy. One. Wow, that's tough. It'd probably be uh, Peter Gabriel, so. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a good that's album. That's not a surprise. Yeah, for me, it's Cheap Trick's first album, Cheap Trick, Cheap yep. Trick. I can play that, yeah. and, and pretty much any of the first three Cheap Trick records. I'm a huge fan of Cheap Trick, man. Damn, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. That's cool. Man. I'm happy to talk to you again. Yeah, nice to see you. Well, Good hang in there. You. We yeah. will talk. Listen, folks, we will talk to you all in person again. It's not like it ain't going to happen, but right yeah. now, being that it can happen. We appreciate you coming out on nights like tonight and, and days and mornings like today because, like I said, we're broadcasting worldwide. Um, unfortunately, it is time for me to go actually eat dinner. <laughs> Probably same for you, T, right? You got to go. And so honestly, for those of you that didn't get on this time, I promise you're going to come on next time. And yeah, we'll honestly, do it T, you want to come on again some other time? Absolutely. Um, dude, right. what else am I doing for the next six weeks? <laughs> oh, man. We're going to figure out ways. You know what? We'll yeah. figure out ways. I told you, uh, Joel from Airborne uh, sent a cool message about how, you know, it was, a, it, I, I can't verbatim say it, but it was basically how us as musicians will find a way to survive. And we will. Yeah. And, and yeah. as you supporting us, we, uh, we just really appreciate it. And we all know that we're going to, find a way to get through this together and we'll have more of these sort of podcasts. But Tommy, I can't thank you enough for being on with me. Thanks, thanks for having honestly, me. Thanks for taking the time out and everybody listening right now. Thanks for taking the time out as well. And uh, we'll be back again. In the meantime, just support Tommy on Instagram. Does vicious one uh, come on by Ryan at Ryan Roxy on Instagram, or if you want to just go to the uh, Ryan and uh, come on down the rabbit hole. Thanks, Tommy. Any parting words? You know what? Just thanks to everyone. Stay healthy. And uh, we look forward to seeing everyone. You know what I mean? Really soon, hopefully. Sooner than later, actually. Killer. Thank you, Thank guys. You. We'll see you again. All right. Um the Trenches with Ryan Roxy.